Well, Mike, obviously uh, everybody was indeed entertained. Uh, but just, just <laughs> That's right. <yeah. laughs> I guess it's my thing now. But just talk to me. I mean, uh, you know, listen, I mean, uh, Tony looked, I think, better than I mean, anybody thought he might. So how did you think that first round was going? And, you know, did you feel like you were getting tested maybe than you thought you were going to be early on? One thousand percent. And uh, I think that's, why, once again, why I, I always go back to why we love the sport of mixed martial arts. I mean, was I supposed to beat Tony? Absolutely. Was I supposed to steamroll him in a lot of people's eyes? Absolutely. Was I a big favorite? Absolutely. But anything can happen in four-ounce gloves while your heart's beating through the roof and you're in a packed arena here in Phoenix. And, uh, yeah, Tony we, Tony is who we thought he was, awkward, rangy, uh, unorthodox. And I made the same mistake. I came in with a right hand, pulled myself, like pulled out, and uh, got caught with something. So – um, we're going to clean that up. Would, you, would they say maybe not a biggest surprise in the fight, but you just feel like maybe it was your own execution? Or was there something that he did that you were like, oh, we were not expecting that at all? You know, I think uh, <laughs> y'all have at, said, hey, you, is, it your, is it your goal to, you know, fight tooth and nail and be in these big wars? And obviously, I got a, a wife and two kids at home. I, uh, you know, I want to be the champion. I don't want to just entertain, entertain, fight, entertain the fans. Um, so I think I, I wanted to have a little bit of a feeling out process. And uh, yeah, obviously, I, I got hit. But um, I was trying to get my, my, my feet underneath me, honestly, with just stand, finally standing in front of Tony, who I knew was going to be somewhat of a test when it came to how awkward he was. And he's skilled. And it was going to be really hard to get out there. I was hitting him with some pretty pretty decent ground and pound as well you know so um dude's a dude's a, a tough dude the kick is one of the greatest knockouts we've ever seen uh anything you drilled anything you you know you thought might be there or just something you saw in the moment what, what happened uh i don't even know if i saw in the moment i think my, my body just moved and foot <laughs> foot to face and a couple backflips. um no honestly like i was i was talking to some people i think sometimes the fights materialize exactly how you want them to. Sometimes you stay within your in your normal box of what you always use, and it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. And sometimes you throw something that you never, ever thought you would ever land, let alone knock someone out with. So it's not something that we, we train. Um, I think I have the best kickboxing coach on the planet, Henry Hooft. Um, but we don't train a lot of front kicks, I will tell you that. And mainly the reason is because I told Henry, <laughs> I don't want to do that, man. It hurts my toes. So uh, my, my right foot is a little bit sore, and uh, I'm a big baby when it comes to my feet getting hit. So uh, didn't train it, but it landed tonight. At the time you cut the epic promo, you hadn't had a chance to see the main event. Now that you did see the main event and how it played out, I guess give us your thoughts on what you saw there, and does that – you know, kind of change which which way you want to go more, you know, 170, tie to fight, et cetera. Man, shame on all of us for ever, ever doubting Charles Oliveira. Um, Gaethje had him hurt. Oliveira had Gaethje hurt. And when you get on the ground with Charles Oliveira, um, he's going to submit you, except for me. I was able to get out of it. Um, but I think, uh, man, there's something, is there not something satisfying about watching Charles Oliveira blossom into who he is? You know, I loved I loved Justin Gaethje's kind of synopsis of him that, you know, back when he was unreliable and missing weight, <clears throat> which obviously this, you know, that was before this, but he was unreliable. He had a spotty record. He wasn't – he couldn't be relied upon to have string together good performances. He was a boy back then, and now he has become the man that is Charles Oliveira, the champion that is Charles, Charles Oliveira. I lost to him, but I think we have – I think we have unfinished business. I got into this sport to become the champion. I got into the sport to where – 12 pounds of leather and gold around my waist, and I would love for it to say the UFC on it. Um, so that fight with Connor, obviously, I'm serious about it. I, I don't think – you're going to be hard-pressed to find somebody who doesn't think I'm one of the most exciting guys on the planet now. Um, and I think I've proven that numerous times now. Connor needs a big fight to put butts in seats, to sell pay-per-views. And, uh, yeah, a fight at 170 would be a lot better than 155. <laughs> I guess last thing for me, yeah, we know you do want to take some time off. Obviously, you want to go be a father and a husband. But uh, knowing that those are two massive possibilities for fights, is there a date on the calendar that you say, hey, I will fight by the end? Or are those fights big enough that you'd end the vacation short if you had to? I mean, what's the plan? Yeah, I, I would uh, – definitely the counter fight, I would end the vacation. You know, um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Listen, when, when, when Connor comes back and he's, he's, uh, he's healthy, uh, I'll be there. But once again, in typical 
combat sports icon that is Conor McGregor. He left his options open. He said that's definitely a fight he wants down the line. Obviously, he's, he's tweeted, and uh, it's a fight that he wants down the line. He's deserved and earned the right to be that, you know, decide when you want to fight, who you want to fight, and, and where you want to fight. So I'm just the guy waiting in the wings. I'm just a guy with a black eye and a sore right foot who just collected a bonus, and I'm pretty darn happy about it. I get to go home and kiss my wife and hang out with my sons. My when you saw Connor's tweet... And my dad's laughing over there. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting some of the bonus, that's why. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when you saw Connor's tweet, what did you think? Did you think he was sort of saying, no, not yet? Or do you think he was just sort of thinking, I'll see what it's like when I get back? Uh, well, number one, yeah. I mean, I think, as I said, Connor has earned the right to keep his options open. He's a combat sports icon. He's the biggest, biggest, one of the biggest sports stars on the planet. And he deserves to be able to, you know make his decisions when he wants to make his decisions. Um, do I think I'd be a great dance partner? Do I think I'd be a formidable one that won't just that won't just give him a challenge but also put butts in seats because people know that it, I am electrifying when I step inside the octagon now. So um, typical Connor fashion, he left his options open. He deserves to do that. And uh, once again, always nothing but respect. I've never been the guy who's come at Connor. Um, I don't need to disrespect somebody or throw pot shots at him to to want to beat him inside of a cage. Was that a strategy that you thought, like, I think this will work better to get the fight with him? Be, what, to be, be respectful? Be, be nice, yeah. No, I mean, I... The 170 thing, for example, like, that's a little twist then. Oh, 170 was a twist. I just, just dislike fighting 155, and if it's not for the title, why the heck am I going to make 155, y'all? I'm, I'm, I'm not the smallest lightweight. Um, anyway, I've been seeing pictures of Conor. He looks beefy, looks big, looks... Strong and powerful, and that's what I said. I want you at your biggest, baddest, and at your best and most dangerous. Let's do it at 170. Do you ever sort of stop to kind of be surprised at how much you've managed to cram into a UFC career <laughs> so quickly? You know, it's it sure is a sure is a feather in my cap, and it sure is cool as an athlete. My wife over here would probably say it's a, you know been a struggle, obviously, but that's just what we wanted to do. We sat down and said, you know, this feels right. This is what we want to do. I want to go to the UFC. And when I first had those that meeting with Hunter Campbell and that call with Dana White, I said, I want to come in and get shot out of a cannon. I want to fight the best guys, the biggest stages, the biggest on the line. And uh, I've come through with my end of the bargain, which is putting on great shows and, and you know now winning some fights. I'm now 500 in the UFC, so that's good. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, and just be, be entertaining and be a good thing for the organization. Listen, man, these guys don't understand what they have. Um, if you've never fought outside of the UFC, you have no idea what it's like to, to be outside the UFC. And then you come to the UFC and you get your eyes open to, to what, a, uh, what the premier mixed martial arts promotion on the planet is. So we'll see what happens next. Michael, right here. Um, say you don't get the title shot against Charles next and you do get Connor. Outside of all the lightweights right now that Charles hasn't fought, who do you think has the best chance of dethroning him? Um, I don't know. Um, obviously, everyone everyone talks about Makachev. Um, Makachev's got a got a puzzle. He's big. He's strong. Um, he him and Charles are similar when they they're they're mainly grappling guys. But man, stop disrespecting Charles Oliveira's hands, guys. I mean, to, for him to put it on Gaethje like he did tonight. Obviously, we saw what happened with me. I mean, the guy's putting it together, man. He's the he's is kind of the champion for a reason. I, it's, obviously, it's a weird scenario going on there. So, um, Makachev. I mean, Dariush is is still very good. Um, myself. So we'll see. Then after you won, they showed you up, hop up on the cage. You were looking for your son in the crowd, and then you got him. Uh, and then they showed you whispering, and then you put him down. What did you tell him when you were up there? I just <laughs> I. I think I said I I just love you so much. I'm so I'm so proud of you. You know, I told him he doesn't quite get it. Um and I told him there was, you know, there's going to be like 25,000 people there and he doesn't even know what 25,000 is, but I'm like there's going to be a lot of people there, but I am so I am most excited that you are here. Um and yeah, it was it was a uh, I was like, where's my son, <laughs> you know? Um, so it was great. It was a lot of pressure. Um, I'm glad it's over, and uh, glad I got to kiss him after. Hi, Michael, over here. Uh, Tony Ferguson, I believe, was transported to the hospital. Uh, is there any positive thoughts or words of encouragement you'd like to send his way? Of course, man. This is, uh, you know, it, it's 
it's a tough sport because ideally that's what I want to do to Tony Ferguson every time, right? Ideally, this is this is the game that we're in. We're in the game of of separating people from consciousness, punching, kicking, knee and elbowing. But man, Tony Ferguson is has been a guy that has helped build this division, the 155 lightweight division. You can't you can't talk about it and talk about the history of the lightweight division without Tony Ferguson. And uh, yeah, my thoughts and prayers are out with him. Um, ho hoping for a speedy recovery, and uh, I know he'll be back. He's El Kukui, he's the boogeyman, he's Tony Ferguson, he'll be back. Iron Michael, congrats on the big victory. How does this feeling compare to the knockout at the USC debut in Abu Dhabi over Dan Hooker? Gosh, they're both, they're both really, really great because obviously one was the debut and this one was kind of getting back on track um, after two losses, obviously. Um, I'd still have to go with the, the, the debut knockout of, of Dan Hooker. You know, I was, a, I was the underdog there, as I should have been, because I was coming from outside the UFC. Um, that was a special, special moment. You know, there was a lot of pressure. Left the relative security of a previous organization in Bellator and came over, and so there was a lot of pressure going on there. Certainly front runner for knockout of the year. How close is this? You always say see it to the top. How close is this to the top? Oh, I think we're starting to scratch the surface, but you know, there's there's got to be some big fights, and I, I got to get that title. You know, the top, and and I guess that's the thing too. I mean, because my message is is not uh, win or bust. My message is not gold or bust. It's not belt or bust. Because everybody in here is going to fail, and you're going to hit setbacks, and you're going to hit roadblocks, and you're going to be down in the valleys. So I, I will be a hundred percent happy and secure with myself and the calling on my life if I never become the champion. But obviously. I want to win that title. I want to fight for that title. I'm going to fight Charles Oliveira for it or whoever he fights next if I don't get that fight next. Um, and uh, I don't know. I, I, the journey has been phenomenal thus far. The platform is growing. This, I'm living a dream. I'm fighting on borrowed time. I feel like I've been fighting on borrowed time for years now. And I appreciate all you guys covering it. No complete certainty that Dariush and Islam are going to fight each other. So with that said, who is most deserving to fight for the title if it's not you? If it's not me, um, that's hard. What's Dariush on? A, he's on a win streak, right? I mean, that's the thing about – I don't want to beat the dead horse, but, yeah, I mean, Makachev has – one win inside the top ten. That's the only criticism. And I know we keep saying, well, people are dodging him. And, oh, he, nobody wants to fight him. And he, He's got one win inside the top ten. So I, that's this is not me coming at him. This is you asking me a question and why I think Darius might be a better candidate, honestly, because he's got more wins inside the top ten, no? Um, so I don't know. That's a hard one. But luckily we got a great promoters and they'll put together fights. Congrats. Thank you, brother. That was awesome. See you later. You, you got...